sorry, Mike, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> so he loaned me this walk from Mountain Equipment Co-op is where he got it from. Good day, and welcome to Yeah, It's Red. This is part two of the logistics and budgeting video. I had to split them up because they were just too long. That aside, the next video after this one will be my first day on the rock. One of the things that I acquired that I told you earlier was uh, a dry bag cooler. That's this item here. I was skeptical at first, but I got impressed by it. I, I really liked it. it. It kept my objects cool for much longer than any of my other uh, collapsible uh, cooler bags. So that was good. Uh, this one is nice because it's like a dry bag. It can be out in the rain, no problem. It's a rubber thing. It has a valve that you can blow some air in for making it a, have an additional insulating factor. So then I did a hack. I also acquired these lunch bags and they're insulated with a zipper and they, they hold quite a bit of stuff. So I would put my ice in that and my goods and then put it in the bag. And that worked extremely well. Now the other hack, I'm back here. The other back was these bags. They're a Ziploc bag uh, of rubber. And I would actually put my ice cubes in here and then put them in the in the cooler bag and that added an extra eight or nine hours of keeping my goods cool and then the bonus being that this was sealed and water wouldn't drip all over my 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 goods so I kept it dry and then with the melted water I could use that for washing up uh, or even uh, boiling something when I needed to. So I was really pleased with this. My son-in-law loaned me some gear. I might not return it. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, if you're watching. Uh, so he loaned me this walk from Mountain Equipment Co-op is where he got it from. It is a non-stick non -stick surface. It's got a lid, folds up, compact. And I was impressed with this piece of kit as well. I was able to cook my breakfast in it, making uh, omelets. Very easy, very simple. Um, I could do uh, stir fry with it. I could fry, whatever. And it replaced my cast iron pans. I had two, a seven inch and a four inch unit. Uh, I opted not to take those because they were just too heavy and took up too much room in my pack. So uh, I stuck with that. And I also had my uh, regular mess kit, which I will show you in a moment with a stove and a propane cylinder, propane butane cylinder. I took that along with me as well, and that worked out extremely well too. Doing the test trips, the trial runs, was also, there was another motive in that, and that was to work out what I was going to pack. And that, that was a challenge, and I had to figure out or research, I should say, what the 
weather is going to be like in the midsummer in Newfoundland. And the temperatures went as low as 16 and as high as 28 uh, that I could find, maybe sometimes 30. We actually did hit 30 one day. So that is a, a wide range of temperature, and these are all in Celsius degrees. So what to pack? Uh, I had last year I had acquired an Olympia jacket, a three season jacket. It's a, the Olympia Dakar. It, is a mesh jacket, it has a liner, and it has a waterproof jacket that can go uh, the inside of the mesh jacket or over top as a waterproof device, or, and it will also act as a windbreaker. And that actually solved a lot of my temperature issues, uh, though I did bring an electric uh, heated jacket with me, which I did use. Then the riding pants I have are also by Olympia, but much older, not as waterproof as I'd like. It does have uh, two parts, the mesh and then the waterproof liner. And that I treated prior to going, but I wasn't really going to trust it. So I had another waterproof suit made by Rhino. That was the manufacturer's name. And it, that was with a, a jacket and a bib type rain pants. I left the jacket at home and brought the bib pants with me and that served me well in the rain, so that was good. I've never owned motorcycle riding boots, specific riding boots, in all the years that I've ridden, which is over 50 years, something like that, uh, just was not part of my gear. I have for the past 25 years, worn Blundstones. I really like those boots a lot. They're comfortable, they're, they protect my feet when I'm riding, they're good. And when they're new, they are sort of waterproof, but I do require a booty to put over top of them. So I do do that. I do uh, bring these special little booties that are waterproof and I slip them on over top of my blunt stones and tuck them in underneath my rain gear. For hands, I have discovered one of the best things for me to wear in when it's pouring rain is uh, wetsuit gloves, like the diver's gloves. They're made out of neoprene. So I wear them, water, when your hands do get wet, there's a thin film of water in there, but your hands heat them up and with heated grips, you're toasty warm. Uh, you don't have to deal with the wet leather protective gloves afterwards and, and waiting for them to dry. These dry quickly and they keep your hands warm in the rain. So those are my choices. And then what to wear once I've arrived at a spot. I have pants that are convertible. I, I'm pretty sure many of you have seen them. The, they have the their zippered legs. so. The zipper's at mid-calf, you undo the zipper, and they turn into shorts. They're cargo pants type of thing, lightweight. I got mine at Mark's Work Warehouse. They have a, they're treated with an insect repellent, which works well when you're out, out in northern Canada in, in the woods in the, in the summertime. They were excellent choice to bring. They were lightweight. I could also wear them underneath my motorcycle pants as a windbreaker. Uh, so that, I did that once or twice, but easy to pack. Other things that I packed was a long sleeved athletic uh, undershirt, kept me warm and also it was easy to wash and, uh, and dry quickly. I had hemp t-shirts and boxers and socks and enough to last me for a week before I needed to do laundry. So that was part of my pack. To document the ride, I was just going to use this Insta360 ONE X2 camera. That was my go-to. And my Mavic Air 2 drone. I did pack uh, my two SJ Cam GoPro type cameras with me just in case, but I didn't use them. I also uh, used these uh, wireless Cinco mics 
uh, with the cat on it and this was in my helmet and then the receiver was plugged into my camera. Worked well. <laughs> I had a couple of sets but sometimes the, these, the charge would only last a few hours and would catch me off guard because I didn't see when it was out. So, and then the odd time I, I had two sets of these, uh, one that is charged and one that is being charged uh, on the go. And one day I inadvertently mixed up the mic with the receiver and they weren't paired. And so I lost sound on that. Oh, and I, Oh, sometimes the video too. Uh, I thought I had the camera on and it was off and then when I went to put it off it went back on again so I lost some things here and there. Uh, it's part of the, the deal. I have good memories and let's face it, you know, the camera doesn't pick up everything anyway. Uh, what I see and what you see on the camera sometimes are just two different things and well, the bottom line is you got to do the trip yourself to see these views. They're just amazing. What did I bring for tools? Well, I have the tool kit that was supplied by Honda. I have augmented it with a few things, a couple other wrenches, some uh, hex key keys. Uh, I have a test light, a voltmeter. I also made some jumper wires in the event that I had to do a red wire bypass on the side of the road or bypass my side stand switch, those kinds of things, uh, I had those. I also had my own ratchet straps, tie down straps for going on the ferry to tie my bike down. I also made some loops that would go under the, the tip, triple tree and I could hook the tie down to that uh, and be really secure to the, to the deck of the ferry. So I had those in the back. I also carried a tire repair kit and an air pump. I never used the tire repair kit, but I did use the air pump a couple of times. Now, what did I pack but didn't use? Hmm. Well, as I just said, the tire repair kit, but I would keep that. The patch wires I didn't use. I had a spare GPS unit, which I didn't use, but I'd bring that back again and my SJ cameras, I would bring, pack them again, just in case. Um, is there something that I wouldn't take that I had packed anymore? Hmm. I think I now need to look at some other options clothing wise. And maybe it is time to look at proper motorcycle boots that are waterproof, which would mean I'd have to bring some extra footwear for the casual times. So I, what would you do? <laughs> and I think I would uh, upgrade my riding pants that would be more recently waterproofed. So, yeah, that's something I'd look into. But that's about it at the moment. The trip was good. I liked how it turned out. I, mean, I had a few little issues here and there. And we'll, we'll touch on those as the series progresses. Thanks for watching this episode. I've had fun doing this. We'll uh, proceed into the first few days and probably tag team with old guy in a bike uh, and try and keep in sync with him when he releases his videos. I may go into some depth about how I program my FOSFOT GPS unit. I've learned a few things and I can pass those things on. So I may do that intertwined with the series. But thanks for watching. If you like the video, click like. If you wish to subscribe, you can do so. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.